I got into gardening from a very young age. I'm Sarah Raven and I'm a gardener, a teacher and a broadcaster. I'm sitting in our annual cutting garden at Perchall Farm in East Sussex. My garden means absolutely everything to me. It nourishes me in all ways, creatively, physically because I garden, emotionally because it's calming. My dad was a botanist and a gardener and sort of taught me about wildflowers and kind of nature. And then through that, I guess I got to know about garden plants as well. It's this wonderful mix of science. As an ex-doctor, I was a scientist with kind of artistry and being an artist. And it's like my gym in that it means I stay relatively fit. It gets me outside, which is good for my headspace. This is my favourite bit of the garden at the moment. I mean, it changes. I mean, not quite from day to day, but from week to week and certainly month to month. It's 20 by 20 foot. It's kind of almost what a lot of people hopefully could fit in their back garden. And it's for cut flowers. And so everything is cut and come again. So the more you pick, the more they flower. And it starts with like hardy annuals, which is this honeywort and salvia and the marigold, the calendula, and then it moves on to dahlias and the cup and saucer plant and things like that. So it sort of, I've thought about it quite carefully and designed it, but it's, I'm sort of looking after it day to day and tying it in and staking and picking. And that's the point it's from here goes into the house and into a vase. And I just think it's looking so nice at the moment. My favourite palette is, is not the kind of pastel. There's a bit of pastel over, over that side, but I love really jewel and rich colours. And so like these snapdragons are just like really velvety and then a bit of zap from the calendula. This one's called Indian Prince. And then I do like the sort of lacy and ethereal, that Ami Magus right over there. I love just arranging that in a big vase on its own just really simply. It's almost sort of saying to me, pick it, um, just as it is, particularly the snapdragons right now. The roses are beginning to go over now. Uh, this is one called Cerise Bouquet, which is incredibly healthy uh, and vigorous, as you can see, and it flowers for ages. So it's flowered all through June and into July. And I suppose top tip for healthy roses is underplanting them with salvias, little dwarf salvias like Nachlinda. Salvias have sulfur in their scent profile and when they heat up, uh, they release sulfur, which is a natural fungicide. So they keep your roses black spot and mildew free. So tip number one is definitely to find some of those and underplant your roses with them. Um, tip two, keep them really well fed. So mulch them incredibly well in the winter. Tip three, prune them hard, be quite brutal. Again, it just makes them healthier. Tip four, keep feeding them. So keep feeding and watering, ideally. So if you've got a hose pipe band, you can't, but use the, your bath water and just slosh that over your roses. I'm standing by this brand new dahlia, which we've bred, which I completely love. And I've actually named it after my eldest daughter called Rosie Raven. Top tips. Well, I really currently am incredibly into dahlias for containers. So if you want a dahlia for a container, you want to go for one less than a 90, but ideally 75 centimetres. And that's what this is, which is why I love it so much. Really, in terms of tips, you don't need to lift them unless they're in pots. So if they're in containers, you do need to store them somewhere cool and dry through the winter and then plant them again in the spring. If they're in the garden, just mulch them really deeply a good sort of 15 centimetres of compost and then pick, 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 pick. That's the thing is that they're cut and come again and you either have to deadhead or livehead them. And as far as I'm concerned, what's the point of taking the deadheads? You might as well take the liveheads and take them into the house. This year's been a really strange one. So March and April, as you all know, was incredibly wet. And then June's been so unbelievably hot and dry. Things are sort of seem to be stabilizing a bit. In terms of the veg, I think it's, it's been quite a struggle because when it was really wet, um, just things like the tomatoes just weren't really growing because the light levels were so bad. 
But um, since then, well, in June it was really good and the tomatoes have just loved the heat in the greenhouse here. Um, and the cucumbers and the aubergines. The aubergines are bigger than I remember at this stage in the year. Basil's been pretty good. Um, so it's exciting for me because we're just starting to pick the first tomatoes. So I'm mainly surrounded by green tomatoes, but um, I had the first rack tomato for lunch today. I think if I was beginning growing vegetables for the first year, I would definitely put courgettes in my top five for sure and they're just like they've got really big seeds so you can't kind of make a mess of it in a way because it makes it easier to sow them so I would sow them into their own little pot um, put them on a window ledge don't water too much they'll germinate in four or five days and then just literally just take that plant out of the pot and put it in the ground with lots of manure um, below the roots and then they just grow and the key thing with courgettes is don't let them turn into marrows. So pick them the size of the base of your thumb. So from the top to the base rather of your thumb. And that's really small, much smaller than you get in a supermarket. But the point with courgettes is they're cut and come again. The more you pick, the more they'll crop. And by leaving them to get bigger, it actually slows them down. So just keep pick, 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 pick and pick more. I pick them probably four or five nights a week. We have courgettes at the moment for supper. So for supper tonight, I'm going to have globe artichokes and I feel like not enough people grow them in this country and with climate change, they're really thriving. They've just loved it because they're Mediterranean and because it's hot and dry, they're really, they're so plump. They're perennial, so they're really low maintenance. And so they're a perfect thing for an allotment because you can plant them and then in sort of from the middle of May until kind of the middle of July, you can take one of these whenever you go to the allotment for your supper. Um, and then you cut them right to the ground, including the leaves, and that makes them reshoot and they give you a second crop in August, September time. And so even though they're not cut and come again, they give you really, a really, it's kind of incredible harvest. And just three final things, if you want lovely bulbs and plants, then visit my website, sarahraven.com. I've got a new book out on how to grow the most productive and easy veg. And come and visit the garden. We're open uh, four days in August and four days in September, which you can book online at sarahraven.com.